<laughs> Santa is always watching. He's watching to see if you've been naughty or nice. Those are some words that most kids have possibly heard at some point in their childhood. Some think he doesn't exist. Only I had seen him at the door of my house. But when I wanted to let him in for my presence, I got a completely different Santa than I thought I would get. And now I really know he is always watching, but in a very shocking way. My friend Kara and I really meant business when it came to catching him. We used to have an exact plan. On Christmas Eve, we used to take turns through the night so that there would always be someone awake so we wouldn't miss Santa. We even had walkie-talkies for communication. Being neighbors made our plans so much easier because we could keep an eye on each other's house, too. Kara lived a few houses away from mine. Kara and I started all this when we were seven years old, but by the time we were nine, we had already improved our tactics and remained vigilant pretty much all through December. Why? Because Santa is always watching, and in our minds, the days leading up to Christmas were the days he paid most attention to. One day at the beginning of December, Kara and I were at hers discussing our plan when Bianca, her older sister, heard us and started to laugh. <laughs> she mocked us for still believing in Santa. Kara got very upset by this. Bianca was 15 and often made fun of us because of our childish interests. Despite Bianca's comments, Kara reassured me that she would still help me with the plan, even if it would be difficult to hide it from Bianca as they shared a room. We had no luck during the first weeks of December, but on the morning of the 20th, Kara excitedly told me to go to her house because she had exciting news. On the evening of the 19th, Kara was playing with her dog in front of her house when she saw a bright flash coming from behind a tree. She looked around and noticed what seemed to be a big man standing behind the tree. To begin with, she couldn't see who it was as it was dark, but after some Christmas lights shone on the figure, she noticed the man was Santa. Kara swore she knew it was Santa because he was wearing what you expect Santa to wear, a red and white outfit and a Christmas hat. She also said he was chubby and tall. Kara couldn't see his face properly, but as soon as she noticed the outfit, she was so excited that she yelled for her family to come and see. However, by the time her parents got out, Santa had already gone. Kara and I were so excited. Despite being mocked by her older siblings, Bianca and Maurice, she didn't let that break her Christmas spirit. Well, at least not at that moment. On the 22nd of December, Kara came to my house upset. She told me she would no longer participate in our mission. She explained how ever since the day she saw Santa, she had been hearing noises and seeing flashing lights by her window at night. One day she even found her window opened and saw a large shadow moving away rapidly as she screamed waking Bianca up. She was convinced it was Santa until the morning of that day when she saw Bianca and Maurice laughing while they were holding a Santa costume. Maurice was trying on a Christmas hat and a fake beard while they both talked about how dumb she was. At that moment, Kara realized her siblings had tricked her. When Kara said this, I felt disappointed but not defeated. Even if Bianca and Maurice tricked us, that didn't mean that the real Santa wouldn't show up. Despite my efforts, I couldn't convince Kara to help me, but she did promise to leave her walkie-talkie on Christmas Eve in case I got bored while waiting for Santa. When Christmas Eve finally arrived, my parents sent me to my room at 9.30. I was so bored. I thought about contacting Kara, but I was a little bit angry at her, so I simply grabbed a chair and sat by my window. The window was shut because it was cold, but I had left the curtains wide open. I drank a bottle of coke, hoping this would help me stay awake while I could hear my parents in their room chugging on some wine and laughing about boring adult stuff. Despite my efforts, I ended up dozing off. Suddenly, a bright flash woke me up. I opened my eyes and got closer to the window. My efforts had paid off. Santa was standing outside my window. He was big and was wearing his traditional costume, including the hat. Although I couldn't see much more as he was standing sideways, I opened my window, which was not a very large one. It was one of those windows where you can only open the top part. I got up on my chair and yelled at him, You need to come to my house, I offered. With a raspy voice, he sarcastically answered, How should I get in? You don't have a chimney. I'll open the main door, I said without hesitation. Santa really shouldn't be seen by people. He just observes if you've been naughty or nice, he replied. But you can make an exception, can't you? I begged. I bet my parents are sleeping if you come in. It would only be me seeing you. 
No, he answered with a gruff voice. What if I go outside, I offered. I guess that would be okay, he replied. Okay, just wait by the main door, I excitedly commanded. He walked away immediately. I grabbed a coat and saw my walkie-talkie on the bed. I knew it wasn't what I promised him, but I had to call Kara. I called Kara a couple times while I was walking down the corridor. All the lights were off, so I knew my parents had gone to sleep. Plus, I could hear my dad snoring. When I was near the door, putting on my shoes, I contacted Kara once again. This time, someone answered. It was Bianca. What are you doing calling at 3 a.m., you weirdo? She said. Bianca, I need you to pass the walkie-talkie to Kara. It's an emergency, I told her. I must have sounded so serious that Bianca actually asked me if I was okay. You wouldn't believe who's here. It's Santa. He's here, right outside my house, I exclaimed. That is not possible, Bianca moaned. He's actually here, waiting for me. I'm going outside to see him, I cheered. Bianca went quiet for a few seconds. In the meantime, I looked through the peephole to see if Santa was there. He sure was by the door, touching the handle. As I was looking for the keys to open the door, Bianca spoke to me again. TJ, where are your parents? She bluntly asked. They're sleeping, I replied. You need to wake them up. Don't open the door without waking them up, she said with a stern voice. I can't do that. I said they wouldn't see him. But if you and Kara come, maybe he'll understand. He can get us presents, I insisted. TJ, that's not Maurice. That can't be Santa. You need to tell your parents do not open that door, she shouted. At that moment, I heard Santa. Is everything okay, kiddo? He interrupted. I didn't know what to do, whether I should listen to Bianca or do as I promised to Santa. Bianca shouted at me through the walkie-talkie while Santa asked me through the door if I was coming out until eventually both of them went quiet. I wondered whether Santa had left. I spied through the peephole and saw nothing, so I walked to the window and opened the curtain to take a better look. Santa was standing right there, so close that I could see his breath fogging up the window. I could see him perfectly now. This was no old, sweet-looking man with a bright smile on his face. This Santa was a man my parents' age. He was greasy, so greasy, his skin was almost yellow. He had long, oily hair and bug eyes. He did have a beard, but it was an unkempt red beard. He looked at me like a lion looking at a helpless animal. What are you going to do? He said with a very stern yet quiet voice. I didn't move. Although he was outside, I thought he'd be more pissed at me if I moved. Come outside. Come get your presents, he demanded. He then moved back towards the door and began to rattle the handle. I couldn't take it anymore. My legs decided for me. They ran towards my parents' room. Mom! Dad! I tried shouting, but they wouldn't wake up. I decided to start shaking them. As I was doing this, I noticed my parents' curtains were completely open, and there was Santa on the other side staring at me with disdain. Mom! Dad! Quick! You have to wake up! There's someone here! I said, but Mom, who was the only one who heard me, simply grunted and told me to go back to sleep. I looked back at the window. Santa wasn't there anymore. I became desperate, thinking he was trying to get through the front door. I kept trying to wake up my parents but wasn't successful until we heard someone ringing the doorbell multiple times. This finally woke up my parents, who wondered who could be ringing the doorbell so frantically at this time of night. I was trying to speak to them, but being so scared, all my words sounded like gibberish. Both my parents got up and walked to the front door. I begged them not to open the door and told them that a very creepy man was outside. They looked at me worriedly. Dad then took a look at the peephole and sighed while rolling his eyes. He then proceeded to open the door. On the other side of the door were Kara's dad and her brother Maurice. No creeps here, son, just Mr. Hemingway and Maurice, Dad said with an annoyed tone. He then asked the Hemingways if they were okay and why they had been ringing the doorbell nonstop. Are you all okay? TJ, are you okay? Mr. Hemingway worriedly asked as he grabbed my shoulders. I then noticed both him and Maurice were carrying baseball bats. Confused, my parents asked what was going on. Mr. Hemingway told them that Bianca had gone up to them running and crying, telling them that there was a strange man outside my house dressed as Santa, trying to make me go with him. A strange man? Santa? I don't know. Son, are you sure you didn't dream this? My mom asked. But Mr. Hemingway said that Bianca had been very clear, saying she heard the man talking to me while she was using the walkie-talkies. Mr. Hemingway also pointed out to my dad that although by the time Maurice and him came to the house, 
the man wasn't there, they could see fresh footprints all around the house. The men immediately looked in and out around the house for Santa, but found nothing but footprints. Mom called the police. They did not arrive until hours later. By that time, the footprints had been covered by more snow. My Christmas day didn't start by opening presents, but by having to talk to a detective about the man I had seen, the man I innocently believed was Santa. Christmas day was not ruined just for me. Kara was also asked questions. It turns out her older siblings hadn't gone through with their plan of scaring us by using the Santa costume yet. They were going to do this on Christmas Eve, but decided not to do it because of the heavy snow. So the noises in the open window of Kara's house days ago were done by the same man who I saw on Christmas Eve, who was also the same man Kara saw when she was playing with her dog. This was particularly confirmed by the fact that both Kara and I saw flashing light before seeing the man, and of course, by the fact that he was dressed as Santa. Unfortunately, as nothing major ever happened, not much more was done. The police waited to see if anybody reported similar cases or saw a man fitting this description, but nothing. Kara's family ended up so worried about these events that they ended up moving to a nearby town, but my parents chose not to move out immediately, and by the time they finally decided to sell our house, two years had passed without signs of the creepy Santa, so they decided to stay. Three years ago, Kara and I reconnected and ended up dating and eventually getting married. This fall, our baby girl was born. In the beginning of December, we decided to go to my parents' house so that they could meet our daughter. When we got to their house, there were plenty of presents for our baby, not only from family, but also from friends. I saw Kara grabbing an envelope while I was carrying our daughter. I noticed Kara went quiet, so I decided to ask her what was in the envelope. She did not answer. Kara had dropped a letter on the floor. I grabbed it. It was a standard congratulations for your baby girl card, but it was completely empty. No extra words or a signature. Who sent this? I asked. With shaking hands, Kara handed me something that was also in the envelope. Two Polaroids. In one of them, a clear photo of Kara taken from afar while she was playing with her dog in the snow. The other photo had been taken through glass. It was a photo of me, sleeping on a chair. Both pictures were from Christmas many years ago, when that creepy Santa decided to visit us. We should have remembered that Santa is always watching. Always. What are your scary experiences with Santa? Let us know in the comments and subscribe if you dare.